coming up on the Books, Blogs, and Business Podcast Show. Your welcome email invites your subscribers into your life, and so you definitely need to thank them for joining your list. I'm sharing with you my top seven tips for preparing a newsletter strategy as an author. You want to choose your software, you want to choose the forms that you're going to use, and you even want to choose how you're going to attract your readers to your newsletter. Then I explain how you can get your email newsletter up and running. And of course, later on, I share with you five content pieces that you can send to your subscribers in your newsletter. All this and more on this week's episode. Welcome back to the Books, Blogs and Business Podcast show. If you're new here, welcome to the show. I'm Jewel and on this show, I help you to get visible and get your books into readers' hands. We're starting off with your author newsletter. How do you make one? What's the best strategies? And of course, what do you put in your author newsletter? But before we dive into all that goodness, I want to share with you a random fun fact of the day. Did you know that fruit salad trees grow up to six different fruits at the same time? Did you even know about fruit salad trees? Because honestly, I did not. I was doing my random scrolling on the internet this morning actually, when I came across this phenomena, which caused me to do some more research on it. And apparently they are grafted trees where the graft are the same kinds of fruit onto one tree. And I found that to be totally intriguing because my mind couldn't get around the fact that in the country where I am from, instead of individual mango trees, I could have had one mango tree producing different types of mango. That would have been awesome. And these trees are just so beautiful and the fruits that they bear are also very beautiful. The range of colors just make the tree so attractive. So yeah, that is my random fun fact for the day. We became writers because more than anything, we wanted to share our stories with the world. But the reality is, becoming a successful author requires more than brainstorming, outlining and editing. We realized that without an audience, our books would never reach our readers' hands. So we have to take action. I'm Joe Nicole, and I'm on a mission to help you get your books visible and into readers' hands. To do that, we need to work together. You need to continue to write your story and I will provide you with the strategies and resources you need to become the success you were meant to be. This episode is brought to you by MailRite. One of my favorite email marketing platforms is MailRite. As a busy entrepreneur and part-time worker, finding time to send emails on a consistent basis, aka weekly, can be daunting. I wanted a way to stay consistent in my subscribers' inbox while still adding the value they needed even when I wasn't there. That's why I chose MailRite as my email marketing platform. MailRite allows me to do split testing, send campaigns, and my favorite, create workflows and automation. This means that once a user enters my email list, they get sent a series of emails automatically that provides value to them. All I need to do is create the workflow once and it's automatically sent for each subscriber. And the best part? All this can be done on their free plan. You can get your first 1,000 subscribers for free by simply heading across to jewishpages.com forward slash mailite. That's jewishpages.com forward slash M-A-I-L-E-R-L-I-T-E to sign up. When getting started with your author newsletter, there are two things that you definitely need to consider when you are creating one. First of all, you need to know who your ideal readers are. You need to have a clear idea of who wants to read the content that you're gonna create and what type of content they would enjoy receiving from you. The second thing that you need to think about is what kind of content do you plan to send? So are you trying to nurture relationships with your ID readers? Or are you trying to boost book sales with them? Or are you trying to increase brand awareness? Or maybe you are trying to do all of these three. That is why in my mini course, I talk a lot about how you can identify ID readers. We go through five different steps in order for you to attract the right readers to your book. And so if you're interested in that course, that is something you definitely should check out at jewishpages.com forward slash mini course. But there are just some things that you need to consider when you are preparing your newsletter. And of course, we have to deal with strategy. So I'm going to be sharing with you seven tips that I think would definitely help you to get your newsletter strategy started. The first thing that you want to do is start with a welcome email campaign. 
Now your welcome email invites persons into your life and who you are and so you definitely need to thank them for joining your subscribing list. If you got them to sign up for something but really it was to collect like a freebie then you definitely need to offer them that freebie as soon as you send out that first welcome email. This campaign also allows you to tell your story, who you are, why you are who you are, what you write and even why you write what you write. And it also allows you to set expectations for future emails. In my welcome email series, I explain who I am, I deliver the freebies that I have offered and I even set expectations and let my readers know what exactly they need to expect from me in the coming emails. That also too builds anticipation and it gets them excited and they know exactly why they need to look out for my emails and it also helps them to not put my emails in the spam box. So it has an all wrong helpful feature. So you definitely need to start with your welcome email campaign. Now I have created um, a welcome email campaign package that you can actually grab. So if you head across to my shop, it's just jewelspacious.com forward slash shop. You can get the three day welcome email campaign. Your welcome email can be three days, it can be five days, it can be seven days. However long you want it to be when it comes to the type of audience that you have and how you're actually going to nurture them. And also to need to think about what is the end result of you producing these emails to this person. The second thing in our strategy is that you want to personalize your approach. And so you want to add a personal touch to your email. So for instance, you can put their first name in the subject line. Persons who see their name at the beginning of the email are more likely to open up your email. And this is something I also do with my subscribers. Sometimes I would put the name in front of the subject line or I put it at the end of it, probably if I'm asking a question. So it makes it more personal. It makes it seem like you are addressing them individually. And so persons are more interested in opening an email when they see their name in the subject line. The next thing that you want to do is keep your letters, your newsletters short and simple. Everybody is busy these days. You're busy. I'm busy. We're all busy. And so no one is going to read a really, really long newsletter. Worse yet, if it's just like paragraphs of words, there's like no break in between, there's no pictures. That is like super boring and trust me, it's going to end up in the trash bin, it's going to end up in the spam bin, persons are going to literally unsubscribe from you. And so you want to keep your letters short. You want to keep them straight to the point. You want to keep them entertaining if possible. And remember that you don't have to cram every single thing in this one email. The reason for this is because you are sending out a series of emails on a regular basis. Remember this episode is all about how to create a newsletter series. So you don't have to explain who you are and where you're from and who you are since Adam and your grandmother and your grandfather. And you don't have to explain all that in one email. You can do that over a span of a few emails because you're carrying out your emails on a regular basis. Not only that, but you need to remember or consider how your emails are going to be read. How is this newsletter going to be read? A lot of persons use mobile. And so you're going to have to make sure that your newsletters are formatted for mobile users, for iOS users, for Android users. A lot of persons, they read their emails while they are in commute to work. And your emails need to have the format for mobile devices. Some email marketing platforms do automatically adjust accordingly. So for instance, the email marketing platform that I use, which is MailRite, they actually adjust the forms according to what device a person is reading them on. So you need to make sure that your newsletters are in the formats that persons most likely would read them in. And you can do that by just testing it out as you go. Another thing that would be very vital for your email marketing strategy for this newsletter strategy is that you have to have captivating subject lines. You must use engaging words to encourage your readers to open up your emails. So always test out subject lines, run them past a friend, ensure that there are no mistakes in your subject lines because all those things decrease if a person is gonna open up your emails. But your email subject line 
should be engaging, intriguing, interesting. It should make persons want to know what else is there in the actual email. So test out the subject lines that you are creating and see which one works best. Always remember that this is a trial and error. It's all about testing out. It's all about seeing what works best for you. So it's not like you're going to try one thing and then it's going to work. It doesn't work like that. You have to test out to see what works best for you and for your audience. And while the subject line must be catchy, it must be inviting, the information that you're providing in the newsletter should also be worth reading and it should have call to actions. So you can have a really, really good subject line, but if your email is like, eh, then no one is going to want to continue reading your emails. And so you have to provide content worthy, reading worthy information in your newsletters. The only way that you can do that is by knowing exactly who your ID readers are because you know exactly what they want to hear from you. You know what they are interested in. That is the key to providing content that is worth reading. And of course, you have to add call to actions. So those are CTAs, call to actions where necessary. So in one of my newsletters, I share the entire amount of content and what went on on the podcast, what went on on social media and things like that. And there are various links in that content that persons who go and click on what really interests them. And just yesterday, I sent out my newsletters, a new type of newsletter that I'm doing, that I'm sending out on a Monday. And so I have various links in there so that persons can access whatever really interests them. So you want to make sure that your content is worth reading, but then also too, you want to make sure that they are the necessary call to actions so that persons can click on those links and go to the various places. It's also super vital that you ask for feedback. You want to hear what your subscribers have to say about the content that you're providing. You also do want to hear what their struggles are, what things that they would love to get more advice on or more information on, or what it is that they can hear from you that's going to benefit them in the long run. So they want to, they hear from you a lot. And so now it's time for you to hear from them. So listen to how you could provide better content and value to them. So always ask for feedback. Now, a really, really good question is why send out newsletters? Why is it important? What's the point, especially as an author? First of all, exposure. You're an author. So most likely you are probably a new reader, a new writer who is listening to this podcast. So the more exposure that you can get, the better for you in the long run. It's going to definitely help you. The second thing that it does is increase sales. So you can increase your book sales even before your book comes out. And the more new persons that join your letter and they get to learn more about you and your book, then they go buy it. And of course, more book sales, more increasing book sales, you get more money. So that really helps. A third thing is that you have strong reader loyalty. So your readers get to know you as an individual. According to the information that you send out in your newsletter, they get to understand who you are, why you write what you write. They get to know you as an individual, which helps persons to stay closer to you. They trust you, they like you, they know you. And so that builds that reader loyalty. The fourth thing would be increased social media engagement. When you have a really, really, really good newsletter, persons are gonna share that content on their social medias and that can start a buzz of talk that can literally lead back to more persons joining your newsletter. So we have four benefits, exposure, increase in book sales, stronger reader loyalty, and of course, increased social media engagement. And these are probably four of the best ways or benefits when it comes to sending out your author newsletter. So definitely, if you haven't thought about it, this is your sign. Start an author newsletter today. One thing that I want to point out as always, this is my PS, my disclaimer, is that as an author, you don't need to create content that surrounds around just like books and writing. I talk about this so much times. Whatever you're creating, just because you're an author or writer doesn't mean that everything has to be about writing. Persons draw closer to you when you talk about other interests that you have. 
because sometimes your audience have similar interests in other things and that helps them to like you more. For instance, I'm part of Max Monroe's newsletter and every Monday morning, I look forward to them dropping into my inbox with memes and gifs. Now, they write some of the most funny romance stories that I have ever read. But their newsletter is not just about that. Their newsletter is about bringing joy and laughter to your Monday. And so every Monday, they will just jump in your inbox with all these memes and gifs just to make you laugh. And it's just the best thing ever. So when you're creating your newsletter, consider how you want your readers to feel. What would make them look forward to your email every single week? Think about that. Think about the type of person that you are, the personality that you have. Think about the stories that you write and why you write those stories. How do you want a person to feel when they read your stories? Is it the same way you want them to feel when you are creating this email, when they are reading your email? Those are things that you really need to think about. Now that we've gone through these seven tips in order to create this strategy, the next thing that you want to do is choose a newsletter software. I usually use MailerLite. They give you your first 1,000 subscribers for free and they allow you to send about 12,000 emails a month, which is a lot when you're not beginning, but you're not going to use all that. So that is a plus. MailerLite, they have like free sign up forms. They have tons of videos that are dedicated to helping you get comfortable with their platform. And so MailerLite is an easy, beginner friendly platform to start creating your newsletter with. And so if you want to get your first 1000 subscribers for free, simply head across to jewishpages.com forward slash MailerLite and you can get your first 1000 subscribers for free. But I use MailerLite. The next thing I use would be a newsletter subscription form. They have sign up forms. So you must create a sign up form. This allows your users to opt into your newsletter and it automatically syncs with your email funnel so that they automatically get the email without you doing anything less. So you can literally set up workflows, which in most email marketing platforms, you have to pay for the workflow feature. But again, in MailLite, they allow you to have that workflow feature for free and I'll take full advantage of it. You can schedule out your emails in advance. So you don't have to be creating emails every week. You can create your emails for the month and then that allows you to save time and it automatically goes out on the times that you designated it for, to, for it to go out. So that's a great plus. You must have a form for persons to opt into so that they can get onto your list. And the next thing would be that you have to attract persons to your newsletter you have to get persons on there. So there are many ways that you can do that. Of course, you need to do market research to see what, again, your ID readers want. It's all boils down to your ID readers. What exactly it is that you can provide to them, what freebies you can offer them that's going to get them on your newsletter. What is the incentive? So you need to do research on that to get persons on your newsletter. This episode is brought to you by the Target Reader Mini Course. Get 20% off your purchase, identify your perfect readers for your book, and put yourself on the path to writing success in as little as 30 minutes a week. You can grab your mini course at jewishpages.com forward slash mini course. So what exactly should authors include in their author newsletter? For instance, we have three different types of newsletters that you can actually carry out to persons who want to read your newsletters. First of all, we have the practical newsletter where you create quick, helpful, easy tips on doing something that your readers are highly interested in. So if you're sharing like your best cooking breakfast tips for on the go, or you're sharing your best late night meals, these are things that you probably could like share in a practical newsletter. It's a great way to build better relationships with your readers and also to, to boost your email's engagement rates. The second type would include curated content. These consist of valuable articles, links, and suggestions collected from multiple sources in order to offer something of value to the reader. So you can also call it like a buffet style newsletter because it really includes little sections of interesting tidbits. And then thirdly, you have a single topic content where your newsletter is devoted to just one topic 
This is perfect for nonfiction and business books. And it's here you can share technical information on how to do something. But it's just one topic that you probably go a little deeper into. So what exactly can you put in this newsletter? Remember we talked about the fact that as an author, you don't have to just deal with things that are writing related and author related. So basically the short answer is that you can have anything that's going to interest your readers inside of your newsletter. This is not very specific. Um, there are a list of things that you can put in, but literally anything, anything that you want, you can put in your author newsletter. So for instance, we have memes and jokes. Before I talked about Max Monroe and how she, well, they actually would send off memes and jokes in their newsletter and they would be hinting at stuff with their books and it's pretty fun. So memes and jokes, it might seem like fluff to some, but a lot of readers hearing jokes makes them happy. They like hearing jokes that rely on clever and wordplay. If you come across a joke on Facebook or another social media platform that is relevant to your genre, then you could consider including that in your next newsletter. So just recently I sent out my memes and jokes in my newsletter. And so if you were in the list, you would have gotten those memes and jokes this week. So that's one thing that you can send. A second thing that you can send out would be launch team invites. Remember, it takes a team to launch a book. And so your newsletter is a really fantastic place for you to find new team members. And so you can ask your subscribers if they would like to help you launch your next book. And there are really a lot of ways that they can do this. They can contribute their creative skills to the campaign. They can agree to pre-order the book. They can share your launch campaign on social media. If one of your readers says yes to any of these above helpful tips, then you can add them to a special mailing list for you and your launch team. And then while you're at it, you should also plan how you're going to reward them with perks. A lot of persons allow persons on their email list to be part of their launch team. They have like actual Facebook groups where they have these launch teams. And it's just the most amazing thing ever because everyone is so supportive of this one person. And so using your newsletter in that way can really help you to increase your book sales, but also to, to build and form a really good community. A third thing that you can put in your newsletter would be questions for readers to answer. People appreciate being heard and they like it when their opinions are sought out on an important, important topic. And so you can use your newsletter to actually ask questions and you can use your newsletter to answer questions as well too. You can ask your readers to choose between several cover designs for your books. You can ask them which characters they like the most. You can ask them what they are reading. You can find out more about your readers through that. While you're at it, you can embed a form into your email so that persons can respond right away. One thing that I love about this is that I remember I was part of a group where persons would ask questions in the Facebook group and the owner of the newsletter would answer those questions, not just in the Facebook group, but also she would highlight those in the newsletter. And I think it was so cool. It gave you the opportunity that if you were to ask important questions in this group, you could have had your question been featured in the newsletter. And through that now, other persons probably would have the same question, but now they got it answered. And it kind of gives you a little bit of exposure. It, it just forms really, really good community. And I really did appreciate that. And so if you can incorporate that in your newsletter, then I'm pretty sure that your readers are also going to appreciate you showing that you really care about what they have to say and that you really care about the questions that they ask. Another thing that you can put in your newsletter are books similar to what you write. Now, remember that readers are always looking for new books to read. Yes, they read in your genre, they read your books, but they don't just read your books only. They read other books in the same genre. And so if you could mention from time to time that these are the new books that you're reading, or probably you can introduce your readers to new authors, it will help these new authors find readers, but it will also to build community, it will build trust because 
you are not just promoting your books only you're promoting other books it may be new books debut books new authors that persons haven't heard about that your readers probably haven't encountered and so by sharing this little tidbit with them in your author newsletter it fosters community it helps the new authors to actually get seen by your readers and by others so think about including these books in your newsletter one thing that i am trying and striving to do i'm going to follow this suggestion definitely but i'm also striving to include these in my podcast so i'm trying to have a segment where i can just have these books that are featured for the month that is coming up these debut books let them be featured on my podcast so that gives the author's exposure and so my listeners you would be able to know which books are coming out and if you're even interested in any of them. Now, the next thing is super similar, and that is you can feature books that you are reading. And so whatever you are reading, your newsletter subscribers, they are interested in what you are reading. They may not exactly be interested in your daily activities, so they probably wouldn't even care that you had coffee this morning or whatever. But when it comes to reading, because they are readers, they are on your subscriber list for a reason. They decide to join your newsletter for a reason. They are readers. And so they would be very interested in what you're reading, especially if you read what you write and they enjoy the genre that you write. So you can briefly mention the books that you're reading. You can give a 100 word or 200 word review. You can explain why you like them, why you dislike them. This is going to help you to forge a connection with your readers, but it's also going to help you to turn them on to new authors as well, just like the previous tip. So share with what you're reading. Usually on my podcast, I would share with the current book that I'm reading. I did send out to my newsletter this week, the two books I'm looking forward to reading this month. And I'm pretty excited. So I'm interested in seeing who else is looking forward to reading those books as well. The final tip that I have for you is to be consistent. Consistency doesn't mean that you have to be weekly or daily. If you plan to send out your newsletter every single month on a particular day at a particular time, that is being consistent. If you plan to send it out every two weeks on a particular day at a particular time, that is also considered being consistent. Most persons send a newsletter every single week you are in your email subscribers inbox every single week and the reason for that is that persons don't forget exactly who you are especially if your newsletters are pretty interesting persons actually look forward to that so i look forward to getting max monroe email newsletter in my inbox every monday and this monday i did not get it so i am a little worried because i'm like where is my monday morning distraction so when you are consistent with it and you keep up with it and you make it really interesting and persons enjoy opening that newsletter when you skip persons are going to miss that persons are going to miss you and so you want to make sure that you're maintaining your consistent schedule whatever consistency looks like to you or however you can stay consistent as an individual there are literally so much more information that I can talk about. There are so much more things that you can include in your author newsletter. So much more things. There are so much more things that I can actually speak about on this podcast, but we don't have time for all that. So what you can do is head across to jewishpatriots.com forward slash Facebook group. You head across to the Facebook group and you can talk about the other things there. I do post. And so under the post on social media on Instagram and on Facebook, you can talk about the other things that you want to put in your author newsletter. I love hearing from you. And so that would just make my day if you can just head across there and tell me one thing that you really enjoyed from this episode, one thing that you're going to try in your author newsletter. And of course, if you have never had an author newsletter, are you going to start an author newsletter this year? I want to thank you so much for listening to yet another episode of the Books, Blogs and Business Podcast Show. I'm your host, Joe Nicole, and until next time, keep writing. You were listening to the Books, Blogs and Business Podcast Show with Joe Nicole. All resources mentioned in this podcast 
can be found in the show notes of this episode. Share this episode with your favorite social media platform and tag me. By doing so, you will help many of your other fellow writers to learn how they can get their books visible and into readers' hands. And one more thing, head across to your favorite podcast player and leave Books, Blogs and Business a review so that I can know how much you really love the show. I'm Joanna Cole and until next week, keep writing!